In today's news, a three to four month wait for revamped work permit system, four contracts valuing in excess of $11.4 million signed for ESHS redevelopment project. Brigado Flax Educational Center is the 2022 debate champions. King of the Court, uh, Caribbean Court is to be held and government reveals plans for Long Bay Beach development. All this and so much more when 284 News returns. <music> Yo, everything good, Dad? Fine. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What do you mean? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into, well, you know I huff. I watch him ball. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Welcome everybody. It's Friday, April 1st, 2022. A happy April to each and every one of you. I'm Ron Grant coming to you live and direct from Tortola in the Virgin Islands. Happy Friday and thank you so much for joining us. Beginning on the local scene, four contractors totaling in excess of $11.4 million were signed on Thursday for the construction of four new buildings, which are part of the redevelopment project for the Elmer Stout High School campus. Now, the contracts were awarded to Quality Construction Limited, which won the bid for the technical block, Otland Heavy Equipment Company Limited, Classroom Block South, Metro Construction Limited, Classroom Block North, and the Administration Block was jointly awarded to Sunleaf Construction and Northham Construction. Now the total value of the four contracts is over some $11 million. Speaking during the contract ceremony, which was held at the on the premises, that is, of the campus, newly confirmed Chief Executive Officer of the Recovery and Development Agency, Mr. Anthony McMaster, said once completed, the four buildings will house some 42 classrooms it's basically four stories with 42 classroom eight technical rooms that would allow for the full functionality of the senior division of the Elmer Stout high school but in addition to that pay attention to the timelines in September we formed a project steering committee made up of the Ministry of Education the Ministry of Finance the high school management, the CEO, the principal, and her deputies. That was on the 21st of September. By October, we had commissioned and completed the geotechnical investigations, which told us what the soil conditions were like, where we could build, what type of structures we could build, and feel very confident that they will withstand hurricanes, and earthquakes. By November, the financial secretary was able to come back after, I'm pretty certain, giving Dr. Glasgow and his team sleepless nights. They came back and they said, your funding based on your prescribed budget is approved. Move forward. That was in November. By December, we engaged Trojan Design Consultants Limited which is spearheaded by Ronnie Letsom, which I'm pretty certain all of you here know, and a product of the BVI High School. And whether you believe it or not, 7th District, whether you believe it or not, they did the impossible. Because we signed a contract with them in early December, but before we went for Christmas break, they had delivered designs ready to go to town planning for approval. Deputy Premier and Minister for Education, Dr. The Honorable Natalia D. Wheatley, congratulated all of the winning contractors. He said the contractors are now competing at an international level as bidders since the project was open to all international market for prospective uh, bidders. I want to congrat congratulate Mr. Roy Garraway and Quality Construction who has 
certainly been a strong contributor in the recovery of the Virgin Islands. As well as Metro Construction, Mr. Brian Marshall and his team, Mr. Dion Crabb and Atlan Heavy Equipment Company Limited. In fact, Premier, uh, when we refurbish this building back here, we have some familiar entities. And certainly, um, they would be uh, winning these bids in a very transparent process. They're doing what they have to do. And they are now, um, Brother McMaster, I'm sure, will, will elaborate on this. They are at an international level in terms of winning bids because, of course, this procurement process is at an international level. And they'll have the opportunity, based on being able to win bids at this, through this process, to go and win bids outside of the Virgin Islands. Meanwhile, Premier of the Virgin Islands, the Honorable Andre Foy, Minister for Finance, said he plans to have a monument of Elmore Stout, for whom the school is named in honor, along with past principals on the campus once the project is completed. At the handing over ceremony to reopen this school, we will be inviting Mr. Stout right here yeah. to bless these grounds. Yeah, yeah. And we want to ensure that there's a mo monument built here in his honor so that students now and those to come and those who already passed through can always remember his commitment to education, development, and life skills of our people, along with making sure that we have a monument of the name of each and every principal that served at this school. According to the Premier of the Virgin Islands, the plan is to have the project completed to have students seated and learning in the new buildings by September 2022. The government has revealed their plans for the development of Long Bay Beach, Beef Island, during a virtual public meeting held on March 29th. Preliminary plans include a parking facility, a hiking trail, picnic area, water sports zone, and much more. Take a look. A healthy vegetation line and beach dunes are critical for the long-term sustainability of the beach and protection of turtle nesting activity. As such, the plan prioritizes restoration of the beach vegetation line which primarily consisted of sea grape trees. Boulders are also proposed to prevent vehicles from driving and parking on the beach dune system until the beach vegetation recovers. To facilitate parking, screened parking areas will be created at the main entrance to the beach with convenient walk paths to the beachfront. Organized parking areas will also be created at each end of the beach. The plan features an area to support picnics, cultural events, and social gatherings. As historically required to maintain an overall peaceful, tranquil, family-friendly environment, permission must be sought to play amplified, loud music or to host mass crowd events. To support sustainable tourism activity, a vending zone will be established within line of sight of the seashore but set back from the vegetation line. In addition to protecting the beach, setting back development will ensure structures are best protected in storms. The center of the beach will remain natural and undeveloped. Supporting facilities will be built around the vending zone, including taxi parking, guided footpaths to the vending zone, picnic area and seashore, signage, restrooms, and waste facilities. Long Bay is to be preserved as a swimming beach, allowing persons to swim safely along the entire beach. Beach chairs will be strictly regulated to maintain the seashore for public enjoyment, maintain a natural aesthetic, and minimize impact to turtle nesting activity. A water sports zone will also be established, and to add to the enjoyment of the wider beach system, a hiking and bird watching trail is proposed around the salt pond, leading to a lookout point. Now, viewers, the ministry emphasize additionally that their goal is to develop the beach sustainably and preserve its natural beauty and amenities. The ministry also affirmed that the beach will remain under its governance and not be managed in any way by any external entities, such as cruise lines. I need to stress that development of our beaches must benefit our local community. As such, I want to categorically dispel the rumor that has been circulating that the ministry has intentions of Disney Cruise Lines 
managing the beach. I don't know where these things come from. This has never been contemplated by the ministry and is not part of the plan. The ministry is responsible for the management of all beaches in the territory that are not national parks. The ministry has a mandate to ensure that beaches are protected and the ministry believes there are opportunities to strike a sustainable balance between development and environmental protection. The Long Bay Beach Management Plan is to be done in a number of phases, beginning with conceptualization, which they say will rely heavily on input from the general public. Viewers up next, some three to four month wait for revamped work permit system. We have the details of this, along with others. All this after word from our sponsors. You're watching 284 News. There's a reason you get up on a morning. A reason you pick yourself up start the day. Maybe it's sheer grit. Maybe it's your ethics. Maybe it's because you know people like you are waiting for people just like you. We all have our reasons and for Republic Bank that reason is you. Every little thing, every big thing, it's all about making a difference in your life. Because after 182 years, if it's one thing we're sure about, is that the difference is you. We're here to help. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Um, no, no, babe. I'm actually watching the news right now. Take, take, take a listen. Topping our newscast today, UFOs seen around Tortola Pear Park. And District 3 residents outraged over no water supply. They simply cannot bathe. These and more stories when 284 News returns. All right, babe, just get some rest. Take to Advil and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, honey, i see you later. I love you. It's clear to see that Coconut Lounge is a place to be. The coolest cocktail lounge in the British Virgin Islands. A lounge like no other, with welcoming, professional service, and a breathtaking ambiance. Not forgetting a diverse selection of wines, beers, and signature cocktails. Cozy, comfortable, contemporary. Coconut Lounge at Tortola Pier Park. Visit us today. Viewers, welcome back. Continuing on on the local scene, residents will have to wait another three to four months before the revamped online work permit system, dubbed 2.0, is made available to the employed public. This was the timeline given by the Minister for Labor and Immigration, the Honorable Vincent O. Wheatley, during a recent press conference. Honorable Wheatley highlighted the need for the territory to move in the direction of utilizing similar technology adding that the new system will facilitate sections for national health insurance, social security, as well as inland revenue. We must move to online system if you're going to be able to capture certain data for good sound decision making. We have already started that process. We have several meetings. It will pick, probably take us about three or four months to bring back online 2.0, okay. which we'll be able to do a proper treatment of work permits. We found a lot of things that were overlooked. We came and we kind of met this already in trend, the last one, and we didn't, for some reason, overlook certain things about it. That we've just identified a lot of shortcomings. In 2.0, we're going to address all those shortcomings, including an interface with like NHI and Social Security and Inland Revenue and so forth. So 2.0 is going to be something else, but it's going to take a couple of months for us to actually get that system back to where it needs to go. But going online, for me, is not an option. It's where we have to go as a country. Thank you. In the meantime, Minister Wheatley at the time of the press conference said close to one third of the 1,500 backlogged applications were completed. I think of the 1,500, we probably have about maybe close to one third done, maybe three or four hundred. The Premier has given us a timeline of one month to remove all of them. We intend to keep that deadline. 
Now, viewers, the Labor Minister said the aim of the Department of Labor and Workforce Development is to have the backlog fully cleared in the one-month period declared by the Premier. The Labor Minister said the aim of the Department of Labor and Workforce Development is, of course, to do this as quickly as possible. The Brigado Flax Education Center debate team has officially named, been named as the 2022 Intersecondary Debate Champions. The Brigado Flax Educational faced off against the Claudia Creaky Educational Center of Anagata and debated the moot vaccinations are our passports to economic and social recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Now the Brigado Flax Educational speakers Jada Barrett, uh, Trevon John, and Ryan Ramley was successfully who argued in opposition of the moot securing not only first place overall but also the best speaker award which was given to Ramnall. Let's take a look at their winning argument. Mr. Moderator, esteemed judges, members of the audience, I would like to thank the proposition for their excellent research that explains how the vaccines work to treat the COVID-19 virus. I think I'll share that with my friends because they laughed at me for taking a vaccine. However, that's not what this debate is about. They have spent the last half hour explaining the benefits of vaccines, which we have never disputed, but they have failed to show us any correlation between vaccines and economic and social recovery. We are here to state resoundingly that vaccines are not the passport to a country's social and economic recovery. As my teammates expressed, there needs to be flexible approaches and innovative measures put in place for economic growth and social recovery from this COVID-19 pandemic. The first speaker of the proposition stressed on obtaining immunity from taking the vaccine. Mr. Moderator, this point, it sounded nice, but some facts were left out. Now, when we get this so-called immunity by taking the vaccine, does it work to protect us from these mutations that the first speaker mentioned? It sounded so, but ask yourself, why then do we keep hearing about these booster shots being developed? Furthermore, immunity can be obtained naturally, but the proposition insists that vaccine are the way to acquire it. How is this possible if people are refusing to take the vaccine? If we see vaccines as the passport, our economy will become completely dependent on people's choice of taking the vaccine or not. Also, won't the government have to pay to import the continuously developing booster shots? As we all know, a lot of our money is already spent on imports. The proposition said that revenue will be increased, but the way I see it, expenditure will also be increased as well. The proposition also talked about improved tourism being connected to vaccination. Esteemed judges, let's visualize the proposition's plan for the future. Everyone is vaccinated and tourists begin traveling. Places make money and the economy recovers. Now, what happens when there is a spike in cases again due to a new strain of the virus coming out? Shut down our borders and lay off people in the hotel industry once again? As I will reiterate, we are not saying no to vaccines. Yes, they might help to control the virus, but we need to find other ways to recover socially and economically because if we don't, we become too fragile and susceptible. In my history class, which I'm really awake in, one thing managed to stick with me. Learn from past events so the same mistakes do not happen again. The second speaker of the proposition spoke about vaccines restoring mental health. Esteemed judges, didn't this sound slightly contradictory? Persons getting fired because they don't want to take a vaccine? Which is their right? It does not seem like a benefit to me. People even took their lives in some cases. Is this mental recovery or deterioration? Mr. Moderator, there's always going to be a time in our lives when the solutions to our problems are not simple or easy. Let's take one of my favorite childhood stories, The Three Little Pigs, as a good example. Why take the easy, simple, straw or twig solution in the form of the vaccine when we can take our time and build a stronger structure? My teammates and I refuse to take the magic bullet approach outlined in this moot since we recognize, based on our extensive research, that vaccines will not miraculously work to alleviate or redeem our socioeconomic problems. We stand resolute 
in opposing the mood that says that vaccines are a passport to economic and social recovery. Thank you. Viewers, up next, the highly anticipated King of the Court Caribbean Championships are set to take a center stage. We have the details of that interview after a quick commercial break. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this breaking CCT Live update. Hello listeners, thank you for joining. I'm Ron Grant reporting for 284 News out of Tortola in the British Virgin Islands with this very special breaking news report. Since the start of 2022, customers have been taking advantage of the one month free trial for CCT Live TV and signing up for Fire Fiber Internet. Residents Kyra Powell, Massa Hickingbottom, Carly Cartel and others have taken to social media to heap praise on CCT for the Fiber Internet and CCT Live TV. However, we have just been told that the one month free trial for CCT Live TV will finish at the end of March. Customers are asked and being advised to go to CCT today and take advantage of this deal before it goes away. Reporting for 284 News out of Tortola in the British Virgin Islands, I'm Ron Grant. You value traditions. To you value music. You value education, family, I love you. <laughs> service, thank you, you're welcome, love, life. At Popular, we're committed to you and everything our community values. For the things you value the most, count on us, Popular. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, come. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Viewers, welcome back. All roads will lead to the Jeffrey Kane's Arena on the sister island of Virgin Gorda this Saturday for the highly anticipated King of the Courts Caribbean Championships, which is scheduled for 8 p.m. Now, the basketball competition will have representatives from 12 Caribbean islands, including St. Kitts, Nevis, Montserrat, Anguilla, Guyana, St. Martin, St. Eustatia, Philippines, Dominica, Republic, USVI, Tortola, and Virgin Gorda. Now, our Kamal Haynes sat down with uh, Mr. Steve Parallon, who's the organizer of the event, who briefly explained the origin of the competition, which was birthed out of the COVID-19 pandemic. So just a quick history. Um, this event was created in 2020 during the pandemic. Uh, one of the reasons for us creating such event was obviously the social distancing protocols and basketball, one of our beloved sports in this island and throughout the world, were basically put on pause because it's a physical a sport, a contact sport. And so we figured, hey, how about just keep some kind of competition? So we came up with the, the three-point competition, King of the Courts. We went throughout the districts and we crowned our district king where we then had the main competition at the multipurpose complex where we crowned a king of the court for the BVI, which was Jason Edwin, who is going to be representing Tatola. Basically, this Caribbean um, event was something we had in hindsight, and we wanted to do it in 2021, but as you know, the COVID basically kept extending, and so now we're finally here in 2022. It's a reality. We have 12 islands that are going to be participating this Saturday with already two of the islands here, St. Martin and Anastasia. And from tomorrow, we have other countries coming in, Montserrat. And then Friday, the rest of the islands will be in. Steve Parallon also spoke to the Celebrity Shootout competition as well as the other competitions scheduled for, scheduled, sorry, for fans and females. Now... The current defending champion of the Celebrity Shootout competition is Premier of the Virgin Isles and Minister of Finance, the Honorable Andrew A. Foy. Like last time when we hosted this event, we had the Celebrity Shootout, which uh, the Honorable Premier Andrew Foy won. He was the king of that Celebrity Shootout. So we 
decided to do it again because the, the main competition, we know it's going to be serious, um, but we need to put a little bit of, of fun in between. And the, the celebrity shootout has always been a fun event. And we have a very interesting feel. Again, we have the Premier who's coming back to defend his, um, his title. Uh, the Honorable Natalia Whitley told me he's not going to win again. He's going to dethrone him. So we're holding him to that as the Minister for Sports. And then we also have a couple entertainers um, in Peanut the Real Nut uh, who will be actually performing Virgin Garda on Friday night at Telmos for the Meet the Players party. So we have the Meet the Players party on Friday night where persons who come out and meet the players at Telmos. And then we have Pascal, Boss, Dink Dog. We have um, a other couple, uh, couple popular persons from the community like uh, Massa, Rodney, and others. So we're going to do the celebrity game somewhat half time of the event. And then also we have a fan shootout for a long trip ticket to St. Martin. And I know my boy Jose is going to make sure they have a good time when they go there. So uh, one lucky fan is going to have the opportunity to shoot and win that long trip ticket. And also we have a game for the female, which is a free show game that they can win one of those popular crossbody bags from Hustlers Never Fold. The ferry, which is organized specifically for the game, is scheduled to depart Rotown Ferry Dock at 7 p.m. and return at 12 a.m. We wish the, wish the organizers, uh, as well as fans, the best of success as they compete in the uh, tournament. Viewers, that is all the time we have, but I want to thank you so much for tuning in and sticking with us for another week of content. Of course, we are 284 News, your source for honest and impartial news right here on 284 Media out of Tortola in the Virgin Islands. Be sure to check out our website at 284media.com as well as our social media handles on Instagram, Twitter, and of course Facebook. Do have a wonderful weekend and a happy Friday. Bye-bye. The wait is over. CCT Fire is here. Experience ultra-fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all-new fire-blazing, super-fast CCT Fire network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services. One-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only. Registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, come. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. <laughs> you want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want top of power?